three hardback books. I found these at the Dollar Tree. I had to really search and find books that were kind of the same size, but you can also get them at thrift stores. Then I take my white chalk paint, and I'm using a paintbrush this time, and you wanna just go on there and do kind of a thick coat, spreading it out. Um, I don't mind some of the brush strokes because it shows some of the, I don't know, to me it makes it look a little bit more antique-y, rustic -y. And so I just continue to spread the paint so that I'm trying to cover every um, part of the book. So any part of the blue that you see is where I am actually painting. And this is going to be the top of the book. So I just continue to paint with that chalk paint and keep going. And then basically what I'll be doing is finishing the top of this book making sure that it's coated well and this will take approximately two to three coats of the white chalk paint you could also use an ivory if you like then i'm going to paint the binding of the book trying to cover that uh, title and all the words that are on the side this takes a pretty thick coat of paint and again it will take about two to three coats of this to really get that binding covered You'll see the words start to pop through as it dries. That's okay. Um, once that is done, you will just, you know, once it's completely dry, you gotta give it some time, you'll go through and do that again. So you see that it's sitting here. Um, this is after one coat. Now I'm gonna move on to another book. We have three total to paint doing the same thing. As of right now, I'm only painting one side of each book. Um, again, making sure that I'm coating the paint everywhere. Here's this one done. I also did the binding of this book. You can see um, that I, I missed some, so I'm gonna have to go back, which is what I'm doing now, and redoing that. Here is the back of the red book. Um, this is the book that's going to go in the middle, basically, so I'm um, just painting the sides. So there's all three of my books painted. Now one book will be painted on two sides because that will be the bottom book. And one book, the other two books will be painted only on one side because that's the top and the middle book. No need to waste paint on those in between. Then we, okay, so I'm showing you the binding of the book and then you can see that um, the words are not showing through and there ha there's the back of the book when you don't paint it and that is all okay because you're gonna be stacking that. Again, that's how that is. Um, that's the one that's the top and the bottom. So that's the bottom book and I'm going to paint that on both sides as you see right there. And then there's the other ones that don't have the paint on two sides. You want to make sure to paint these books around the edges on the back though in case the books shift so it looks like that they are completely painted and that's why I have them setting up to dry. Now open the books up and you're going to want to paint the inside but you only have to paint just a you know basically a line a square around the book and that is just so you make sure that again if anything shifts it looks like the entire thing is painted. So I'm opening up each book, and as you can see, I've painted them. You hold them open, you let them dry. Chalk paint paints or uh, dries very quickly, so it works out well, and then you just shut the book, and you will be ready to go. I did that to all three of my books, front and back. You want to make sure you do both. This is the chalk paint I use from Michaels. Um, it's the Art Mines. Again, here's what they look like. I just want you to see that they're painted. And then, oops, I had a casualty. As you can tell, I'm painting on my kitchen counter and um, I have all kinds of projects going on. So they're like drying everywhere. <laughs> my, my kitchen counter looks like a craft room and uh, I do have a craft room, but it needs to be cleaned out <laughs> so that I can get in there and do these kinds of things. But I just kind of wanted to show you how the books are painted so you know exactly what to do. Um, and then again, this is the bottom book, so it's painted on both sides. Um, yeah, cleaning everything off because there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> so um, what I want to do now is I'm going to begin, um, I 
think at this point is when I want to actually um, make them look a little bit more rustic. And I do have um, some of that antique wax, but I'm also going to be putting some vinyl stickers on these. And these are Ray Dunn inspired vinyl stickers that I bought online. And I'm going to be putting these on the bindings of the books. I'm just making sure that the books line up okay. So I'm testing that out right now, um, showing you, you know, how to stack them with the bindings facing towards you. So there they are, all three, okay? So I'm just showing you how I've uh, lifted these. Okay, so here is my wax, my antique wax from Waverly. I got this at Walmart. I believe it was $1.67. You wanna put a light coat, so kind of take that off, and then I rub some off because I want hardly any on there. A little bit goes a long way, and I'm just kind of smudging it onto the books so I don't want too much. So just have a piece of paper or something to rub some of that off. And then I'm going through and I'm just kind of dry brushing the antique wax on. Again, this antique wax does dry pretty quick, but I'm making these look a little bit more rustic and old. And I just want to just give them that, that old feel. So I go along each and every book. I do the bindings, I do the corners. And on the top book, make sure you do the top. On the bottom book, make sure you do the bottom. And you just wanna coat these slightly. As you can see, it just kind of lines them out a little bit. And as it dries, it actually lo looks beautiful. If you feel like you got too much of the antique wax somewhere, wait until it dries completely. And then you can go ahead and put a little bit, dry brush a little bit of that white chalk paint over. So now I'm placing my letters on there. This is my uh, Ray Dunn inspired decals. And I couldn't think, I wanted to do a saying like, I don't know, <laughs> jingle all the way or something like that, but I didn't have the right words. So I really struggled with this. And then I thought, hmm, cookies, cocoa, and ho, ho, ho. That all has to do with Santa. So I thought that that was a good trio. So I kind of line them up, place them next to each other, stacked up so I make sure that I'm placing these stickers in the right uh, spot. And with the vinyl stickers, you place them on and you use a credit card or some kind of hard you know, side surface and you just kind of rub them on and you ever so slightly peel them off. You wanna make sure every single letter is sticking. So that's what I continue to do. And then as you see, I've put those all on. So we have cookies, cocoa, and ho, ho, ho. Now I'm hot gluing the books together. So you put a little, put the bottom book down, put some hot glue on, and then you place that center book on. You're going to have to shift it right away to make sure it's there because that glue does dry quickly. You do the same thing with the next book, which is the top book, kind of, Press them together, make sure that they're stacked, and there they are. There's the stack of three. Now the hot glue actually dries pretty dries very quickly, so I'm showing you how they line up all the way around and what they look like. Um, if you have any touch-ups, you can do this at this point if you see something that doesn't line up well. So I chose this ribbon. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I love it. It's the burlap ribbon, but it's got the red chevron print on it. I think it's beautiful, gorgeous, very Christmassy. And so this is the, um, the ribbon that I chose to go with. And you're going to wanna cut a piece that goes completely around the books and then cut it to size. I place it then on the back, take some hot glue and then glue it together. Now, the reason that I can't show you with two hands is because I do not have a tripod yet. And I was using one hand to film and create uh, my design. So I think I did okay with one hand, what do you think? So um, I line them up, I place some hot glue. Be careful not to burn yourself, I do that a lot. Just kind of pull those strings off. But then that's on there, it's secure, and it's super cute, very Christmassy. And then once it dries, you're gonna flip it over. And then I wanna create some kind of a bow. Um, so I do take my chevron burlap and I make a very easy bow. I'll have to do that in another tutorial. Um, but then first I want to take this jute that I got. This one is either from Dollar Tree or from Michaels, I'm not sure. I've kind of found it everywhere. Um, and I am hot gluing it in the back where I uh, attached my ribbons, going around, making jute go a few times around, 
to bundle the books really securely and then to just give them that extra little rustic touch, which makes them super cute. Again, I was doing this with one hand. Um, that glue was super hot, so I was using a paint stick actually to hold that down and let it seal because um, you want to seal those ends together. And then I believe at this point um, we let that completely dry, which goes fast. And then I want to create a beautiful bow uh, for the top of my books to make them look extra cute and decorative. But so far it looks pretty great. So I am going to make my simple bow. I'm giving you a little bit of a demonstration with one hand, the best I can do because <laughs> until I get a tripod, two hands is not available while I'm making my videos. So I kind of sandwich those together and then I do take some jute and that's how I combined my bows. Uh, I just press it through the center you can see, I'll press it right there, press it through the center, and then I take that jute and I tie it around, and you have to tie it really tight, because if not, it comes loose, and then I don't like that look, so I tie it pretty tight, and then I usually go again with a second piece to really make sure that it's tied tightly on there, and I also want some cute little uh, jute strings hanging down, so I tie that second piece on there, and then there is my bow. And then I kind of, oh, so the edges are raw on one side when I do it this way. And all I do is take a little bit of hot glue, combine those edges so it looks like a loop. You may have a different way to use to make a bow, and that's totally fine. This is just my version of a bow. And so that bow is done, and it's um, going to be hot glued on the top of that burlap and jute that I already have on top of the book. But first, I want to make some strings to come down from the bow. So that's what I'm doing making some extra little strings and then um, we will get ready and we will see isn't that cute we'll go through and we will there we go we will glue my hands are sticking and i've got paint everywhere i'm a messy creator you guys i do hair for a living and i'm the same way with color <laughs> it's everywhere but there i have attached my bow onto the books well, I'm putting the glue on, attaching them to the books now. Um, but yes, I'm very messy, so there's stuff everywhere. Um, I also want to make sure that that's secure, so I kind of press on the middle and let it hold on there. Um, you want to just really make sure that that's stuck on there. While it's warm, I adjust those um, jute strings that I attached so that they look nice, and there's where I'm holding it together. Um, and then I usually like open up my loops. You can see that in my bow and I will actually put a dot of glue underneath my loops. Make sure you trim your jute to the correct uh, size. But then um, I do loop those bows and I do put a touch of hot glue underneath them. That secures the bow just a little bit better because this is a really thick ribbon. You can see there, that's where I put the little dot and then I kind of hold that down holding it down so that it's just securing it, not burning my finger. Again, good idea to put like a foam paintbrush stick in there and hold it down so you don't burn yourself. I have burned myself quite a few times doing this little, this little task. Um, and so I'm doing that with each one of the loops, not necessarily the ones on the book, but the ones that are on um, the ribbon. I want those to really stay securely down. So there they are, and then I just thought, you know what, this is just a little too plain. I think I wanna add something else. And so I wanted to make sure that everything was lined up okay. And then I was like taking this time to think about what else I wanted to do because I have so much stuff. So then I decided that I wanted to just glue a bell on there. So I uh, found one of my jingle bells and I started showing things and thinking, hmm, does this go, does it not go? You just wanna play around until you get the look that you want. So I really think that the jingle bell is what looked best. So I'm fluffing that bow a little bit. And then um, I glue gunned that jingle bell right on the book. And there they are, they're adorable, they're cute. This is my Ray Dunn inspired Christmas tree that I did. I got this idea, not the Ray Dunn part, but the little Christmas tree from Olivia. And um, I think it's Olivia's romantic home. The books go so cute under this tree. They were super fun and they're easy. They just take some time, but a really, really cute um, piece for decor for your Christmas holiday. It just makes it fun. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, let me know if you make these. God bless everyone.